You're listening to the PRO Media Network. The next level in entertainment. Who that family? Check out the Pro Shop, the platform store, where you can go and buy all the latest merch to support the platform. Unisex tees for men and women, hoodies and sweatshirts, tank tops, kids and baby items, long sleeve tees, mugs, pillows, wall art, bath bedding, face masks, phone cases, stickers, bags, fanny packs, socks, hats, and many other items. Please feel free to check out the Pro Shops. The link is in the description section below. And remember, it helps the platform continue to so check out the pro shop and who that too. They say who are we? You say Saints. When I said are we ready? You say who? Who are we? 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 Welcome, welcome, welcome. You're now rocking with the Sports Coma with BQ and the guys, where we have tense, entertaining, educating, and enlightening sports talk on you. I'm your favorite sports family. I'm BQ. I'm in the building. Much love to the Who That Nation. Much love to the great Saint Thank Tank. It's Wednesday, baby. It's TSC Radio. We in the building, man. Representing of a black and gold nation So much love to the black and gold nation Who that nation I salute you guys Please feel free to subscribe to TR, TSC Radio On Spreaker Hit the subscribe button Feel free to share the show's links On your social media feed Also uh, Listen this show here is, is, is gonna be an interesting show I'm not gonna hold you guys for very long on this one But my goodness when we talk about the who that nation and the black and gold, what just was displayed uh, the other ga- the other day is not very happy. Eleven Saints players today uh, were cleared from the C-19 uh, protocol, but Marcus Williams, the safety, he'll go on to it as we continue to deal with him. But a lot has been said about why this simply wasn't postponed uh, until today or another day or what have you. Simply what it was. Uh, Roger the chump, the skunk Goodell uh, decided to keep the game going. And of course, the Saints went into it with 20 plus players on the C-19 and emptied its practice squad to compete in the matchup. And of course, they couldn't. The defense did fine, despite the losses of key personnel on defense. Demario Davis, Quan Alexander, just to name a few special teams completely eaten up by it, but did a pretty admirable job. But the Saints offense did offense couldn't put up another touchdown for the second consecutive week uh, as we continue to stink offensively in book took the reins because of C-19 uh, took Trevor Simeon, who was the backup and Taysom Hill, the starter away from the Saints for this matchup. And people say, well, Q, it could have been a lot better with Taysom at the helm, perhaps. But the reality is that's in the past and we have to move forward. And of course, the Carolina Panthers are the next on the docket. So we have to take care of business against those same Panther club coming up and C-19, even though it hampered the team, cannot use that as an excuse. All right. So I, that's one thing I agree with the damn rookie on, you know, <laughs> his, his pregame situation. But this one here, man, uh, it's called the. Uh, 11 Saints players clear uh, C-19 protocol, but Marcus Williams goes on to it. We'll cover that as well. We'll talk about the Saints releasing four players from the practice squad. And of course, the Saints Panthers week 17 injury report. We'll cover all of that. And of course, on the back end, if we have time, we'll talk about uh, Tom. Not so terrific Brady in the NFL, giving him, uh, you know, a you know, dealing with his situation with the tablet. But anyway. Let's move forward uh, on this one. So, like I said, please hit the like button. Please feel free to share the show links on your social media feed and subscribe and join TSC Radio here on Spreaker, which we are broadcasted out to several media uh, podcasting platforms, 
uh, some of the biggest. So you can just simply put the sports comb or some of our other shows like the Pelican Post Game Report for our New Orleans Pelican coverage, also Ring Kings Boxing and the LSU Tough Tiger Talk, among other shows. So with that being said, let's get into this one, baby. All right, 11 Saints players clear the C-19 protocol, but Marcus Williams goes up on it. These articles presented by Saints Wire. Sigler's on the scoop in each one of these. We just can't get only we just can't get only positive New Orleans Saints news these days. The team's activated nearly a dozen players from C-19 reserve list on Wednesday, including the top two quarterbacks in Taysom Hill and Trevor Simeon, as well as the firebrand linebacker Demario Davis. But they lost Marcus Williams, the veteran free safety who leads all defenders and snaps played this season. Williams has been a major part of the New Orleans defense success this season, helping the Saints limit opponents to just 36 pass completions of 20 or more yards, a number that ranks fifth best in the NFL. And for context, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and Las Vegas Raiders are tied for the worst in the league with 61 such games. Let's hope that uh, Marcus Williams can clear protocol in time to return for Sunday's matchup with the Carolina Panthers because They'll miss him if he can't play. And better news, here's a list of the Saints players that are returning from the C-19 list. And the Saints did return defensive captain Malcolm Jenkins and tight end Jawan Johnson from the C-19 list yesterday. So here's more news. Taysom Hill, of course, returns. Trevor Simeon, Demario Davis, Quan Alexander, Kate Nellis, JT Gray, Jeff Heath, uh, Jordan Mills, the right tackle. James Carpenter returns, and hopefully uh, we might be, use him to replace Ruiz or Kelvin Throckmorton. Christian Ringo returns. Adam Troutman, even though a lot of people are not <laughs> happy to see him back, he, he returns. And, of course, the Saints still have players remain, remaining on the C-19 list that could come off that list in the next couple of day, days or so. Jalen Holmes, a defensive end, he's still on the list. Ryan Ramchek is there. So is Dwayne Washington, Carl Granderson, Deontay Harris, who's, Cleared to play after uh, completing his three-game suspension. He has to just merely come off the list. Malcolm Roach, Ger- uh, Gerald Hawkins, the offensive lineman, Kavari Russell, the defensive back, and, of course, Marcus Williams goes on that today. And additionally, offensive tackle Landon Young and kicker Will Lutz are in the C-19 protocols while also out for the season on injury reserve. Now, Deontay Harris is another interesting name. Uh, to talk about as he's getting ready to turn and people are expecting him word on the street to return uh, sometime this week in time for the Saints matchup against the Carolina Panthers. We definitely would need his or use his speed component in the Saints wide receiver room. He's done admirably when there. And uh, other news to deal with about uh, Deontay Harris is that he gave a really good Christmas gift to his Stepfather announcing his, you know, his Instagram that he has legally changed his name to Deontay Harty. That's H A R T Y. And of course, a sergeant in the Baltimore PD, Marlon Harty, has been in Deontay's life since he was seven years old. Now he's making a permanent move to honor someone who has a profound impact on him. It's really cool to see Harty sharing a special moment with his family. He's had a difficult year struggling with debts in his family and his battle with depression. And bottoming out in the offseason with that DUI charge. He's serving the final week of the NFL suspension. He is cleared to play, and Hardy's determined to come out on the other side of this a lot stronger man. So, for namesake, Deontay Harris is no longer Deontay Harris, is now Deontay Harty. That's H A R T Y. So, congratulations to him, and that's a very honorable way to honor someone by doing that. So, big ups to Deontay Hardy. You know, it's going to take a little getting used to because <laughs> we used to call him Harris. But the man's name is Harty now. All right, let's move on to the next uh, article here. Saints released four players from the practice squad, including former Navy quarterback Malcolm Perry. The Saints released four players from their practice squad following a week 16 loss to the Miami Dolphins, including former Naval Academy quarterback Malcolm Perry. He was inactive for that game, but the other three practice squad players being let go did suit up here's what you need to know perry was released we could have used his uh athletic ability his versatility in the miami game but no such luck perry converted to wide receiver from the dolphins and he would play quarterback at him we could have kept that guy it wouldn't have hurt uh the saints did put in the street braxton hoyt who they picked up boy it was signed to the practice squad last minute replacement 
uh, and then he was let go. He saw 15 snaps on the defense against Miami. That could be a good sign that backups like Granderson and Jalen Holmes are getting ready to clear protocol. So he was put in the street and he was famously known for that super slow ass try to get recovery of the football. Remember that? Boy, that guy was slow. Justin March Lillard, another C-19 replaced the total 15 snaps on special teams. And in relief of players like Caden Ellis and Heath and Gray getting special team aces like them back could be uh, big for the game's third phase. Kyle Murphy, who was brought in, Murphy returned to New Orleans, having joined them for training camp and saw three snaps at the right tackle while Binnock briefly received treatment from the training staff on the sidelines. Jordan Mills is on the C-19 list, could be ready to return, which he did. And hopefully Saints can finally get round back. And hopefully so. He's been out for a while. So, you know, and uh, and and might I add, you know, since they're releasing people, they need to completely go out and not only to release uh, Benock, not so much as, as Benock as it is uh, some of these backups. Benock didn't look like crap. I mean, he actually did look like crap. That's the problem I have with him. The interior Saints offensive line, meaning both guards were pathetic in a matchup against the Miami Dolphins. Ruiz should be benched, even though I doubt that they will bench him because there are no one that can no other people that can take his place per se. Kelvin Throckmorton was a turnstile and Ruiz was awful again. Bringing in the question, why did the Saints draft Cesar Ruiz, who was a center coming out of Michigan and then move him to guard when he should be playing the center? He's not a good guard. So what do we do in this situation? This guy was a first round draft pick. He wasn't a third or fourth or fifth round player. So, Big ups to the professor and the rest of the family members, G and Kev, that was like, you, man, seriously, these draft picks that Coach Payton has picked and Rees and yada, 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 they're not paying dividends. Troutman, guys like that, and I'm like, listen, we need to be a little bit patient, even though on Troutman, that is, Cesar Rees is playing out of position, and that doesn't make any sense to me for him to be a guard. I thought they was drafting him to play center and McCoy was supposed to convert to the guard, which I thought called McCoy is a good center. But I think he'll be an all pro guard if you simply move him to that position and let Cesar Ruiz do what he's good at. Play the center position. That wasn't the case. He's playing out of position and it shows he got he, he gave up at least three sacks in the Miami Dolphins game. And that was awful. So, yeah, this is terrible. Yeah, so I mean, this this is yeah. I know Trey Joseph. What's up, Trey? Be kind is in the building. Trey Joseph in the fan. Appreciate y'all joining me on the show. Uh, Peyton Turner still hurt, you know. So and then of course, be kind. San Davenport went on the list today, and tomorrow's day one. No, you know. Yeah, I know it's it's tough. Yeah, a lot of people Trey is mad. Trey saying that uh, his dad was mad looking back at the draft. We got Cesar Ruiz. Yes, I, I wasn't very happy about the Cesar Ruiz pick. And uh, remember, he was also famously uh, blown by by the defender. And he the one that uh, got in there and got Drew Brees hurt that that time. So, I mean, Cesar Ruiz is not a good guard. He's not. He's played decently at times, but he's woeful. He's woefully playing out of position. And and they have no intentions of moving him to the center position. From what I'm understanding, they're going to try to groom him at the guard, which makes no sense to me. The kid's not a good guard, and that's not good value for a first-round draft pick that you give up for a center, then convert him to a guard. If you want a guard, go get a guard, and I've always said that. All right, let's move on to the Saints uh, inactive, whether the uh, Panthers and Saints uh, Week 17 injury report, and let's talk about that thing. Uh, Now, as far as the Saints injury report is concerned, Teron Armstead was DMP'd again. Traquan Smith was DMP'd, had chest issues, and Davenport was limited with a shoulder, Vanette with an ankle was limited in the game. The Carolina Panthers, uh, Cam Irving was DMP'd, so was Stephon Gilmore, and Kenny Robinson DMP'd. Uh, Irving with a calf, Gilmore with groin issues, and Robinson with an illness, and Burns, Burris, excuse me, was limited with Jermaine Carter is limited. Both guys suffering with groin issues. So we still got Ryan Ramchick on the C-19 list. I do expect several players to come back for the Saints. Now, whether Ryan Ramchek will be available to play, he's been out now for about a month or so. And it doesn't look good for him uh, coming to the game. And of course, we know Teron Armstead is dealing with uh, uh, injuries as well to to his knees. And both of those guys dealing with knee issues doesn't doesn't look good for the Saints currently with all the issues dealing with the uh, C-19. And then you look at the injuries 
to the offensive line. And it's telling. And what really sucks and stinks is when the offensive line with Ruiz and Kelvin Throckmorton, who, who came in to replace Andrews Pete, is just to- totally awful. I mean, he's totally awful. The kid stinks, you know, and he's a turnstile. He's his athletic ability simply isn't there. I mean, he gets blown by. He, sometimes you see him get pushed over. And collectively, the Saints offensive line speaking in just period in the Miami Dolphins game didn't hold up, didn't fare too well with Ian Book. And then when they start actually doing a pretty basic blocking, by that time, the kid was already uh, gone. He, he His mind was totally whooped. His eyes was dropping to the field because the blitz was pressuring. It was pushing them, hitting them, throwing them back. And, of course, the referees didn't do anything to kind of help that thing. He took several hits, uh, in my opinion, uh, that should have drew a flag. Uh, and it's just what it is. You know, so it's interesting. It's intriguing and interesting all at the same time how the Saints um, handled the Miami Dolphins game. And, of course, you got to give the Miami Dolphins credit. You know, as hard as hard as, as hard as that might be, you got to give them credit because the reality is the they did what they were supposed to do against the Saints. They totally neutralized an offense that pretty much neutralized itself passing the ball. You know, they picked up Blake Bartles to come in as an emergency option. I don't anticipate him playing if uh, until somebody gets injured. And with Taysom Hill and Trevor Simeon back, Blake Bartles probably going to end up on the street. You know, end up he'll probably end up going back to where he belongs on the street. So we don't anticipate nothing from him in there. And of course, uh, now that people got a a good bit of tape on Ian Book in his first start, <laughs> my only thing is this: after he got beat up like what he did, and we know this is a tough uh, kid. Perhaps he can come back, and uh, later on when he gets another opportunity down the road to try to see if he learned anything, but. The offensive line really wasn't fair to him. They really uh, didn't block well for Ian Book, and it showed. You know, it really did. So it's it'll be interesting. All right, Trey says, are you doing it? Yeah, yes, we are. I'm lining that up. It's funny you ask that, Trey. You must be a psychic of some sort, bro, because that's that's on the docket, and I'm communicating, working out a day for, uh, for Brother Rashad and Brother Dave uh, to pop up on the show. You know, so we'll be looking out for that, bro. That's in the works. And that's been uh, actually that started today early on. So, uh, you know, we'll see how it goes, man. And yeah, he said, in matter of fact, Rashad sent me a text. He says, he said, <laughs> he, said he said, do we have to? <laughs> LOL. Uh, yeah, the, yeah, 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 it, yeah. So he, he's going to get back to me on that. He put LOL on it. And yeah, I, I think they are really, man, those guys are really funny. And they're kind of really kind of upset it about what's going on with Carolina, man. And <laughs> what's going on with Carolina. So big ups to the Panthers Nation podcast with Brother Rashad and Brother Dave, man. Two good brothers. Funny. And they know their stuff, man. All right, let's get into the rest of this thing right here. Panthers quarterback. Hold on just a second, Fab. Uh, Panthers quarterback Sam Darnold is named the starter for the Week 17 game versus the Saints. And Sam Darnold is back in the starting lineup, fam. Carolina Panthers head coach Matt Rule announced Wednesday that Darnold would start Sunday against the New Orleans Saints. It will mark Darnold's first start since he went on the IR with a shoulder issue in Week 9. Now, Carolina went 4-5 and five and 9 uh, games with Darren starts uh, when he started this season. Now, last week, the quarterback returned from IR and played 44 snaps in a 32 to six loss to Tampa as rule seesawed between Darnold and Cam Newton. Newton headed to the bench after signing in Carolina following Darnold's injury. The Panthers lost all five games Newton started, including the week 16 matchup. And rule noted that Newton will be ready if needed. The move to uh, Darnold is the latest word from rule who has churned through starting quarterbacks in his first two seasons in Carolina. They are 5-10. Panthers are eliminated from the postseason. Uh, the team plays backup quarterback P.J. Walker on the IR, well, on the injured C-19 list, the reserve C-19 list, uh, today. The Panthers' offense has been a mess in recent weeks without running back Christian McCaffrey sporting an offensive line that ranks among the worst in the NFL. 
Carolina couldn't consistently produce through the air with Newton at the center, and the hope is in certain Darnold will inject life into the passing game. Now, Darnold didn't shine as a starter early this season, completing 59.4% of his passes, uh, but he did have one of the biggest games against the Saints in Week 2 with that 26-7 win. That afternoon, Darnold went 26-38 of 38 for a season-high 305 yards with two TDs and one interception. But loses a five straight rule, hopes to get back on track with Darnold before heading to the offseason. The quarterback is under contract in 2022 for over $18 million fully guaranteed. And the Panthers picked up his fifth year option. So, I mean, they got their own problems. And I can understand why uh, Rashad and Dave <laughs> don't worry, won't talk about that thing. Yeah. But the reality is also, yeah, they're in dire straits. But like I was going in the article, astutely made mention of the fact that the the, the Darnold took care of the Saints in week two you know and of course we was dealing with C-19 issues with the coaching staff but regardless or not that didn't affect the players on the field you're, prof- you're a professional and you are expected to handle your goddamn business in which the Saints didn't do and of course early in the year it was win lose win lose win lose and at, at that time the first five weeks of the season the Saints hadn't got on a course, And of course, during this season, this has been a hard season for the black and gold and particularly the family base because of the fact that the team can't win or seem to win consistently in the New Orleans Superdome or excuse me, the Caesar Superdome, which has been renamed. They stink in that place. The only win coming against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and that seems to be the only team we can beat consistently. As we finish out the rest of the season with two games against the NFC South opponents in Carolina, who were eliminated, as the article indicated, and of course Atlanta in Week 18. So, first things first, uh, we're gonna see how it all uh, how it all say, uh, shakes going down the line, man. But man, it's gonna be intriguing. The Saints is this is gonna be a hard. This is really gonna be a a a, a very tough game to watch i'm gonna be honest with you because there's no pressure for carolina to step up and do anything their season is eliminated so the pressure for them to win to get a playoff slot or whatever is done nobody expected nothing for carolina for the rest of the season which means they'll play free which is dangerous the uh, another thing is the saints offense can't score touchdowns the last two weeks the saints have put up zero touchdowns and you need touchdowns to win games unless we can, unless we play in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers again. <laughs> then we'll beat them without scoring a touchdown because the defense would then take the ball away from Tom Brady, sack him, fluster him and everything else like that. So Darnold had an excellent game against the Saints and week two that helped upset the Saints and they season seemed to be like it was going the right way. So this one will be in the dome. The Saints stink in the dome. The Saints offense can't score any touchdowns. Um, it, we'll see where it all shakes and where it goes, man. But this will be a hard to watch game. It's probably going to be a very difficult game to watch because I, 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 even though people think Taysom Hill is a better fit in the offense than Ian Book, of course, he's a rookie. But Taysom can't make the he's not an accurate quarterback and the offense tends to struggle with him throwing the football. So. Intriguing all at the same time. But anyway, let's get into the final article uh, of the show before we uh, head out this sucker. And let's talk Tom Brady. Speaking of which, Tom Brady receives a warning from the NFL after angry tablet toss. And this happened. This was something that happened. And this was something that happened. And of course, a lot of people's like, nah, he shouldn't have been warned. He should have been fined. But it's Tom Brady. The NFL is not going to do that. If that had been a Saints player, you would have got fined. The NFL didn't appreciate Brady's tar- tablet toss. He, uh, he tossed the tablet, couldn't believe that the Saints was beating his ass. And then he said on speaking on his Let's Go podcast with Gray, he admitted that he got a call from New York. He said, I, I did get a warning from the NFL. He said, via ESPN, ESPN, I can't throw another surface or else I'll get fined. Imagine that. Imagine that. So never mind the fact that he was out there throwing tablets they they gave him a warning for that he'll get fined on that with the next one never mind the fact he was running over to the saints coaching staff uh ryan neeson and and cursing at him and telling him to go f himself never mind that he was cursing at, uh, at officials never mind that which is going to give you a warning on you tossing your goddamn microsoft tablet on the ground 
you know. So, I mean, it's just more of the bull, the BS that goes along with Tom Brady. It's like, really? Tom Brady did all that shit. Tom Brady threw his tablet on the ground because he was getting his ass kicked. Not only that, but he's cussing at referees. Didn't get nothing for that. Not only that, but he's running over to the same sideline after after interceptions, telling them to go F themselves. Nothing happens with that. Nothing. Not none of that. You don't talk about none of that. No, we're just going to talk about the fact that you drew a tablet. It's just it's just. It's pathetic, man. I really and see. And Tom Brady to me is is a petulant child at times. You know, I respect his ability to win games. But this is this is what happens when you elevate players above the rules and you treat them a certain way. They, they get this petulant child behavior that nobody wants to call out. And then you have all the media types that agree to take toward Tom Brady and uplift him. And it's on most of the majority of these national shows where they have a don't defame Tom Brady policy. Oh, don't defame on. Don't don't talk bad about it. You can say he did have a good game, but don't 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 ride on him like big Q rides on. him. And I ride on him because he deserved to get rolled on. He is a idiot. He's a moron and a chump and a petulant child for how he behaved in the Saints matchup. The Saints were uh, handling handling the business. And he didn't play well instead of being a big boy about it and saying, you know what? The Saints, I just don't play well against them. Credit to them. They're awesome. You don't see him throwing tablets and wins. He gets frustrated, act a damn fool and cut up in the NFL. Say, we're going to warn you, give you a warning for you throwing the tablet, but not worrying about you cussing out, saying F you go F yourself to uh, the coaching staff for the Saints, not getting a penalty on that and not getting a penalty on anything. They just allow him to do whatever he wants to do. So that's what I have a problem for it. It's a double standard. And of course, from the who that nation, you understand uh, that's what goes on. And in, 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 from the who that nation standpoint is that there's a lot of double standards. You know, if there was a nation called double standards in the NFL, we'd be living in that goddamn nation because there's a ton of double standard uh, that the NFL run through the who that nation. They really do a bunch of BS that goes on with the NFL and how they behave behind especially players like Tom Brady that that sucks but anyway with that being said that's going to do it for the stream as we give a, a quick recap of some of the show of uh, the articles that we covered 11 Saints players cleared the C19 protocol but Marcus Williams goes on it and a bunch of players comes off that list Taysom, Trevor Simeon, Demario Davis, Quan Alexander, Caden Ellis, JT Gray, Jeff Heath, uh, Jordan Mills, James Carpenter, Christian Ringo, Adam Troutman, all coming on, who's still currently on the list, Jalen Holmes, the defensive end, offensive lineman Ryan Ramchek, running back and special team ace Dwayne Gray, defensive lineman Carl Grandison, wide receiver Deontay Harris, uh, uh, defensive tackle Malcolm Roach, offensive lineman Gerald Hawkins, defensive back Kavari Russell, and uh, safety Marcus Williams are still on that list, not to mention Landon Young and Will Lutz are on the C-19, despite the fact that both those dudes are on the injury reserve for the rest of the year. And of course, the Saints did have a few releases off the practice squad. They released former Navy quarterback Malcolm Perry. He's gone. Braxton Hoyer has also released. Justin uh, March Lillard, the linebacker, is released. Kyle Murphy is also released. Some of the guys that they signed uh, to kind of help out during the C-19 outbreak. And then, of course, we talked about the injury report that was released today with the Saints, Teron Armstead and Trey Quan Smith, both DMP'd for Wednesday. And then limited status on Marcus Davenport and Nick Vanette, both dealing with either shoulder or ankle problems. So that's something. And of course, the the name change for Deontay Harris, for those who don't know, Deontay Harris has changed his name. He's no longer a Deontay uh, Harris. He's now Deontay Harty, H-A-R-T-Y. And he did it uh, this holiday, this Christmas, actually. And uh, in respect to his stepfather, who's been in his life since he was a seven year old child, since he was seven years old. So big ups to the brothers and sisters that's doing it right. That's taking care of children that are not biologically theirs. For such individuals, there is a high degree of respect that's given out. And that's that says a lot about a man that takes responsibility for another man's child or another woman's child or another woman taking responsibility for someone else's child. However, the, However, it may go respect and love to people that do that because they're doing it big, very selfless. All right. So with that being said, that'll do it for today's episode of TSC Radio. Hit the subscribe button. Join us here on Spreaker. 
Feel free to share the show links on social media and subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. That'll do it for the show. I'm going to holler at you guys on our Thursday stream with more news. Who that to you? And I'm out. Go to the sauce store LLC.com for all your beard needs. Your beard guy. Or if you're a lady that has a guy that has a beard. Well, guess what? Now you can get his beard on point at www.thesaucestorellc.com. Balms, oils, wood picks, all the essentials needed. Well, optimal beard grooming. They have it at www.thesaucestorellc.com. They got it all. Go to www.thesaucestorellc.com. The Sauce Store LLC.com for all your beard needs right now. Tell them Big Q sent you. HomeBistro.com. Freshly prepared, home delivered, restaurant quality gourmet meals delivered straight to your home. Choose from over 50 plus gourmet meal options cooked by world class chefs and delivered frozen, ready to eat within minutes and no commitment. Welcome to the one shop gourmet food delivery specialized in affordable options to eat right and feel great. 100% satisfaction guaranteed. Every ingredient is hand picked to the highest standard. And why you should buy from home. HomeBistro.com, restaurant quality made with natural ingredients, delivered right to your door. Overnight shopping is available. Diabetic, paleo, heart health, and vegetarian options to eat during business since 1999. Courteous, knowledgeable, and professional support. Complete PCI compliant SSL security ordering and great meals. Choose from some of my favorite dishes. The Mediterranean chicken with orange honey sauce, the charbroiled chicken romesco, or the grilled chicken breast with sweet and spicy vegetables. No matter what you choose, you can't lose with homebistro.com. Eat great, feel good, and save some money with homebistro.com. Hit the link in the description section below for more information. The Who That Daily.com. That's right, the Who That Daily.com. Your one stop shop for everything New Orleans Saints, New Orleans Pelicans, LSU Tigers, and even the top flight boxing news. So if you're a Who That and you're looking for a place to stay up on your team, the Who That Daily.com is your site. The Who That Daily.com for the sport Who That in all of us. Follow the sports club on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube.